Hi, I'm Doug Hansel, one of the product designers here at Avid. Product designers are pretty lucky people because we get to go out and talk to folks like you and find out what you'd like next in the product and we tell engineering. So in this case, today I'm going to be showing you the Avid Artist Series color control surface that we've been working on. Before we even go into color correction, you should know that this is a great transport controller. So here I am in source record mode and I can simply jog the source monitor by moving the track wheel here on the left hand side. And I can mark an endpoint, jog down a little bit, and mark an out point. Simply go over to the right hand track wheel and I'm controlling my record monitor. I can also jog there as well as skipping to the next clip and I can just hit splice or overwrite and cut in the clip. So it's a great editing controller and we haven't even started color correction yet. Lots of fun. But let's go into color correction. First thing to do is to launch the color correction mode. So we'll hit F1 and here's color correction. Immediately I'm color correcting. My track wheels control my luminance. So I've got setup, gamma, and gain. So immediately I grab the left control and I'm adjusting the black point. If I grab the right side, I'm adjusting the gain. And the middle is gamma. So this is usually the first thing you do is get your contrast right. You'd be looking at a scope as well and making sure you're legal with your colors. And we'll look at scopes here in just a minute. The other thing, of course, you can do is set the hue offsets. Let's say we wanted to warm up this shot a little bit so I can grab the midtones and move them a little bit over here towards orange and pretend like the, the sun's shining a little more. Now, if I've really improved things, I'd like to kind of toggle this before and after. So I've got reset and toggle controls all the way across here for each one of my uh, track wheels or track balls. So if I touch this one, for instance, I can toggle that black point I set with setup before and after. Did I improve it or not? Also for the track ball, I can see if I like that warmth or I'll leave it cold out there. So the same control also allows me to reset. If I've really screwed up and gone too far and I want to start all over again, I simply can hold down that button, reset button, and longer than a second and it'll reset me back to my default. So in this case we're back to zero. Let's go after that black point again and maybe not quite go quite so far and then take the gamma down and actually get a little bit more contrast with that. And so what we want to do now is talk about how we'd go and do some of the other types of corrections. So we've got here in Symphony channels, levels, curves, secondaries. How do I do that? I can hit nav for navigation mode and the surface is now asking me what do you want to do? HSL, channels, levels, curves. Let's go into curves. So if I press the curves button it launches me into the curves tab and now I've got a whole different way of correcting. Now this was an interesting challenge for us in that we've got a graph here and the graph works fine when you take a pen or tablet or a mouse and click on a point, but how can we use these controls? So what we did is we said if we move the track wheel, we're going to run a shadow cursor up the graph to where I might want to make a correction and wherever I decide I want to do that, I can say new point. I can back off and make another new point and say new point. So I've just created three points and you'll notice that when I uh, rotate the track wheel I can snap magnetically to each one of those points and the one that has the circle around it is the one that's currently selected. And now if I move the track ball it's going to let me adjust that. So I don't have to click and drag here which is kind of slick. So if I want to decide what frame of reference I'm looking at I need to be able to jog the footage around in the monitors, right? For that we have shift mode. So if I hold down this button for just a second, I can toggle myself into shift mode and you'll notice on the surface we've got a different display here that's telling me previous, current, and next because that's what's showing up in the monitor right now. So what that means is if I start to uh, move the, the track wheels, I can actually choose the representative frame that I want to look at. So the three track wheels correspond to the three monitors. So that's the way I can pick which frame I want to see as well as what shows in my three up monitors there. So if I go up here and grab the soft knob for next, I can rotate it and let's say we want to look at a scope so we can actually see what we're up to. Let's actually go back to HSL so we can get that black point firmly where we want it to be sitting at the bottom there for blacks and now we'll crank up our gain and maybe lower our 
gamma a little bit to get a little bit more depth in that shot. And just like that, I'm done. Next shot. So I can hit next clip and I'm off to the next one. We've done that one. Go to the next shot. You need to definitely calm that one down. So we'll calm down the gamma there. And all the time, you can see my scope is showing me I'm peaking there so I can lower the uh, gain point and get myself back into legal. Also, it looks like my blacks are a little bit too much. So let's, I can do both of these at the same time, lowering the gain and raising the setup. So that looks pretty good. We can compare and contrast here, like we said before, with each of the individual controls with these reset buttons, but we can also look at everything. So if I hit R3 or F3 here, I can toggle before and after across all my corrections and see that I'm fixing my blown out shot there and it's looking pretty good. I can also uh, shift R3, which will give me my dual split mode and see my before and after in that way too. Everything without even touching the mouse. So if, what if I did want to touch the mouse though? What if I wanted to actually grab a, um, a color from my shot? So I can hit F4 here, and how did I know it was F4, you ask? Well, if I hit this little eyeball symbol, which is the show symbol, it pops up and tells me, toggle mouse mode, right there under F4 when I press F4. So we're in mouse mode, and we can go over here and click and go sample a color from the kayak and we've got it. So let's run over and look at uh, curves real quick again. Let's say we wanted to change the fourth curve, which is our, our luminance. How am I going to do that? I've got three track balls, three track wheels, but I've got four curves. Well, there's a bank button. So if you hit bank two, you're going to have control then of your fourth curve or fourth track ball. So let's go back to bank one and let's say, you know what, this is a great looking correction I've got going here and I want to save this. So I've got color buckets here. So if I click on CG1, for instance, I can save that color correction into bucket one or CG4 saves that correction into bucket four. And if I hit the button underneath it, I can paste out of it. So everything that's in the UI is basically mapped to the surface, but hopefully very repeatable in the same position. How about we go to secondaries? So if I hit navigate secondaries, it brings up the secondary control. Now let's say we want to grab the red of that boat. I can do that in a couple different ways. Probably the most efficient is to actually use the syringe and go over there and sample that color. So we can go into mouse mode temporarily here, click on the syringe and go grab that color. And of course it's said, okay, I've got the color and it's put me in isolate mode so I can see what I've got. Now at this point, I can go and adjust the parameters here with the soft knob. So I can say, let's change the width of that to make sure we're not getting any extra color in there. But first, let's change the output vector. If you remember, we're controlling input vectors and, and now we wanna go change the output vector. There's a couple different ways we could do this. Uh, right now, we're looking at all the input vector controls up here across the top. If I page over one page, because I've got a page button here, and now I've got control of the output vectors. So I can change the hue just by rotating this control and I can change the color of that boat. So the slick thing here is that's one way to do it. But because we've got a wheel and we can actually map that straight to the wheels here, the other way to do it is to actually use the track wheel and swing this output vector around for a different color. And likewise, the track ball will let me control both the hue as well as the saturation simultaneously. So I can use the track ball to really get full control of what that color looks like. So lots of different ways to control secondaries, basically your choice. Another really cool feature of the Artist Control Series is the way that it physically connects to the computers. I've got an Ethernet connection here, but it's not just Ethernet, it's using the powerful Yukon control protocol. All the Artist Series connect in this way, and that means I've got ultimate flexibility. I can have multiple software programs running on the same computer or even on different computers, all able to instantly connect to the control surface. Even if it's in a machine room in the back, as long as it's on the same local area network, I can use this surface instantly with that machine. So it's a lot of bang for the buck when it comes to multiple workstations and one tool. Anyway, I hope you enjoy using it as much as we enjoyed building it.